Alright guys, here we go. Let's take a look at review. Okay, um, ooh, this is great. Remember when we talked about chain rule? We started to outside, we work our way in. Okay, so the derivative of e to any power is e to that same power. Work our way into the next one. Now you guys, the next thing we're gonna do is actually squared because remember when it's listed like this, it means tan of x squared, okay? So I'm gonna multiply this by, bring the two down in front to tan to the first, okay? And that takes care of the two. Now we need to do the tangent x. And this is just memorizing, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay, so I need to make sure I have an e to the tangent x squared. I need to make sure I have a two tangent x and I have a secant squared. That looks to me like letter D. Okay, all the different steps there. <clears throat> okay, slope of the line tangent. Does that mean pivoted? All right, now look guys, when I have x's and y's in the same thing, this is... um. Implicit differentiation. Ooh, I forgot for a second. All right, check it out. Um, I get one over x y times the derivative of x y. Okay, so the chain rule again is one over, and then times the derivative of the inside. Well, for derivative of the inside, I gotta do a product rule. So I'm gonna go derivative of the first times the second first times derivative of the second, dy dx, okay? And then I go over to this side, and the derivative of x is just one. Now, it wants me to find the derivative, so look, I'm looking for this, where x is one. That's cool, because I have my x, and I could definitely put that in, but what am I missing? I'm missing my y coordinate, right? Let me go back through here and figure out, is there a place? If x is one, can I use that in here to find my y coordinate? I'm going to try to do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. If the ln of x, y equals x, and x is 1, the ln of 1 times y equals 1. So the ln of y is 1. Okay. Now, if we move that into exponential form, remember how we can do this. We can go e to each power, and that cancels out. So I end up getting y is e to the first. So let's go ahead and plug this stuff in, okay? I am going to plug in 1 for x and e for y, all right? This is 1 over 1 times e. Then in my brackets, it's 1 times e plus 1 dy dx plus 1. Lots of 1s again, all right? Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. Okay, by just multiplying by e on both sides, right? So if I multiply that by e, I multiply that by e, that crosses out. Okay, so I get down to 1e plus 1 dy dx. I'm going to drop the ones because they are using equals e. At that point, when I subtract the e over, I get 0. So that's cool. Well, it looks like my slope at that point is, okay? All right, nice. Uh, another chain rule. Now, look, this one, plugging in pi over 9, okay? Another chain rule here, but we're going to plug in pi over 9. So I go, the derivative is, okay, derivative of cosine is negative sine 3x, and then the derivative of the inside is 3. If I'm going to evaluate this at pi over 9, as it's not showing up. Okay, sorry, that froze for a second there. All right, so now when I'm finding the derivative at pi over 9, which is like not an angle we know, but check it out. This turns into 3 pi over 9 times 3. And as we know, pi over 9 is pi over 3. And I'm going to go back because I made this somewhere on scratch paper, right? Or on the front of my test booklet or whatever. And I'm going to go back and do my, look at my trig chart. Or if I haven't made it yet, I'm going to make it real quick. How fast we, right? 30, 45, 60, pi over, pi over, pi over 3, 
one, two, three. Uh, do I even need to finish this? No, I'm good. Okay, so the sine of pi over three is root three over two. This is negative root over two times three. So I'm going to go with negative root three. Okay? Okay, another implicit. So this is something we haven't done for a while, so this is good practice. Okay, start on the outside. The derivative of tangent is tangent squared. And then I got to do the derivative of the inside, okay? And again, the derivative of the inside, this is a product rule. I have to go derivative of the first times the second plus first times derivative of All right, and the derivative of x is 1. I need to take this apart one little step at a time. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by secant squared. Okay. So I get 1y plus x dy dx equals 1 over secant squared xy. Okay. So you guys, at this point, I'm pretty much just going to, um, let's see here. Subtract the y, divide by x. Subtract the y, divide the whole thing by x. Obviously, like this is simplified. Let's think about this for a sec, okay? Secant squared is on the bottom. Well, I certainly don't even see a secant squared in that one. And in this one, the secant squared is on the top. I need it to be on the bottom, all right? So actually, you know what's going on here? What is 1 over secant squared? That's cosine squared. So a question like this, we talked about this in class, where it's like not only testing your calculus, it's kind of testing your ability to remember stuff you learned previously in math, like identities, like the reciprocal of secant is cosine. You know, so a little bit tricky. Anyway, so now I'm going to subtract the y. So x dy dx cosine squared xy minus y. And then I'm going to divide everything by x. And there we go. Okay, cosine squared x, y minus y over x. All right, so that little step was a tiny bit tricky. This is one of the ways that I use my answer to help me guide how I'm going to do problem. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, f is a differentiable function. I got a lot of information here. f of 3 is 15, f of 6 is 3. f prime of 3 is negative 8, f prime of 6 is negative 2. Oh, it's an inverse question. What's the value of g prime of 3? Okay, guys, when I'm doing an inverse question, right, I always start with the thing it's asking me to find the prime of. And I kind of like, there it goes. Yes, g prime of 3. Why well, start with that? Okay, and I go like this. Okay, this is how I do inverse. g prime of 3 is 1 over, I put the inverse, f prime of, and what do I always call this? Magic number, right? I don't know what magic number is. Got to remember what magic number is or how we find it. Well, the way you find magic number is you say, okay, um, g, if I'm looking for g prime of 3, I want to know what g of 3 equals. And then that also tells me f of that is 3. So I kind of like two things I can look at. g of 3 equals what? Now, does it tell me g of 3 equals what up there? It does not. Unfortunately, it doesn't give me any information with that. But since they're inverses, what it means is f of something is 3. So as I look over here, f of something is 3, f of 6 is 3. Okay, so now that I know f of 6 is 3, actually, I'm going to... I know that g of 3 is 3, and I know that that's 6. Now, to actually solve the, um, the, the remainder of the problem, it's 1 over f prime of 6. It's 1 over negative 2. Okay? Inverses are tricky, but they'll show up. So if you can kind of remember those steps, that would be awesome. All right. Uh, you guys, when you see ddx, it just means the derivative of. Now, the first thing I notice when I see this thing I notice, ln and e, right? If I ever have an ln and an e together, that just equals 2x. Okay? Now, I'll show you how to do this if you didn't recognize that, and you'll actually be okay if you had to get the answer still, but the derivative of 2x is 2, 
right? So it makes that like pretty when I see an E and an L M together, right? Let's say you didn't remember that. Okay, that's okay. And you start doing a chain run. Start with L N. Well, the derivative of L N is one over. Then I go inside. And what's the derivative of E? The derivative of E is E two x. And then I go up here, and the derivative of two x is two. And I notice, boom, this just equals two. Okay. Um, so there is a shortcut to that, but you can still get it the wrong way. Well, a perfect. Here's another um, a chain rule with trig. The derivative of tangent is secant squared 2x times 2. Now, I need to evaluate this at pi over 6. So it's derivative of times pi over 6 times 2. Okay, so it's secant squared of pi over 3 times 2. All right, let me make my chart again, or go back to the chart I drew, right? Sine, cosine, tangent, 30, 45, 60, uh, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, 1, 2, 3, 2. Okay, I'm going to only work on the cosine row because that's all I really need for this. All right, you guys, secant squared is the reciprocal of cosine squared. So I'm going to do this one step at a time. What is the cosine of pi over two? Do, do, do. That's one half. Okay. What's the secant of pi over three? That's going to be two. And now I'm going to go, what's the secant squared of pi over three? Well, two squared is four. And so when I come back over here, I use my trig stuff to find that the derivative at that point eight. Well, I should come down here. Eight for my answer. All right. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of um, free response questions now. Okay, let's review a little bit more implicit. I got this equation right up here, only from zero to two pi. Okay. Find the second derivative implicitly. Okay, so when we have x and y together, this is how we're going to do it. The derivative of y is dy dx. The derivative of cosine is negative sine y dy dx. Because, again, we're multiplying by the derivative of y. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. The way I'm going to solve this is I am actually going to factor out a dy dx. So remember, we get everything with the dy dx on one side. Everything else on the other side. Okay, and then I'm going to divide by, oh good, it disconnected again. See if I can get back. Okay, here we go, sorry about that. Divides by 1 minus sine y. Okay, this is dy dx. Now guys, I'm not looking for dy dx though, I'm looking for the 2y x, I'm looking for the second term. So if that's dy dx, now I'm going to go for second derivative. And for the second derivative, if you write like that, okay, I'm going to need to do, I think, eh, let's do quotient rule. Seems easy enough. You could do quotient rule or you could bring that up and use the negative one. I'm going to do quotient Okay, because derivative of the top is zero times the bottom minus the top times derivative of the bottom. Now that goes away. And the derivative of uh, sine is cosine, so it's just going to be negative cosine all over the bottom squared. Okay, I missed something up, though. Now I'm remembering, okay, derivative of the top is 0 times the bottom minus top. When I did the derivative of the bottom, you know what I forgot to put right here? dy dx, because I was taking the derivative. Ah. Okay, now look, this is 0. Negative times a negative is positive. So what I have here is I have cosine y dy dx over 1 minus sine y squared. And you guys, you actually can't leave your answer like that. We have to go ahead and plug in this for dy dx. Okay. 
And so here's what my actual answer is going to be. And then I'll show you how you simplify it, but remember on true response, you don't necessarily have to. Be cosine y, one over one minus sine y, over one minus sine y squared. Okay, and that is a perfectly acceptable answer. The other thing we can do is the way that this works, if you try to like simplify these fractions, that part can actually just jump down onto the bottom, makes it a little bit of a cleaner answer. So it's one minus sine y squared. But like either of those would be okay, right? You just can't stop at this step right here and not substitute in the dy dx. All right? Okay, let's see. I got to move this up a little bit because I have not enough room. Okay. Okay, so here's my next one. Let the function def be defined by 2x e to the negative x. Find the x coordinate of each critical point. Okay, go back to our vocab. You see why vocab is so important? And we're hopefully studying those vocab cards nonstop again. Okay, the critical point is derivative equals zero. And then we can check if it's a relative max, min, or neither. Okay, for the derivative of this, guys, we're going to go ahead and do a product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Now, the only thing I got to be careful of is when I do derivative of the second, I do have to do a chain rule. Because the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So I kind of got to remember that, right? Um, okay. This is like kind of weird to work with to set this equal to 0. Now we've talked about this a little bit before. Okay, when you guys are simplifying, if you see anything, and it works especially well on like e, anything that you could factor out of both, let's do that, okay? Um, uh, just to make it clean, I think I'll factor out a 2 also. It doesn't like super matter, but I'll make it nice and clean. So 2e to the negative x. And what's left over? Right here, I have a 1 left over. Okay? Because remember, I took out the 2 and the e to the negative x. There's still 1 there. You have the 2 e to the negative x. Here I have a minus x left. Now, you guys, we have to set both of these equal to 0 and try to solve them. Let me remind you, though, right here, e can never equal 0, because if I did, I, I'd take the ln of both sides. You can't take the ln of 0. So the only actual point I have is x equals 1. So x equals 1 is my critical point. Now I have to determine if it's a max, a min, or a neither. So I'm going to go ahead and test it on my sine line graph. And here's the thing. i got to test it into the derivative. But see, guys, I always test into this factored out part of the derivative, okay? Let's try plugging in zero, right? Okay, I'm gonna get two e to the zero. Now, e to the zero is one, so that's positive. One minus zero is positive, so it's positive. And now I'll try to plug in two. e to the negative two, does that make it negative? Well, no, e to the negative two just means one over e squared, but it's still a positive, right? When I put two here, one minus two, that's a negative. Okay, and so this is actually going, sorry, I got to grow with this, increasing, decreasing. There is a critical point, and um, it is a relative x. And if it asks you to justify, now this one doesn't say justify, but let's say it did, how are we going to justify it? Okay, we say one of two things. We can say um, f time changes positive to negative, or we can say f changes increasing to decreasing. You can't mix those up. All right. All right, here we go. This one, yeah, last one. Here we go. Find the second derivative. Describe the region in which all solution curves to the differential equation are concave up. What? Okay really don't have any clue what this is talking about, but let's go for it. I mean, I kind of do. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Oh, it already gave me the first derivative. That's great. So I just need to take the second. Okay, so this is derivative 1 half x is 1 half. The derivative 1y is 1 dy dx. 
derivative of negative one is zero. But remember, when you're putting in a second derivative, it's not allowed to say dy dx, okay? So I actually have to put this in there. Okay, so the second derivative is one half plus that, which is one half x plus y minus one. Can I simplify that at all? Uh, I guess I can combine the one half and the negative one half. So we're gonna call it one half x plus y minus one half. Okay, that's the second derivative. All right, how'd I get that? I just combined one half minus one to get negative one half, okay? Describe the region in which all solution curves are concave up. Now, concave up is where that would be greater than zero. So I guess if I'm describing the region, I don't know, maybe I'll solve for y. I'm not sure if that's exactly, but I mean, that's exactly. All right, I'm gonna subtract the one half X to the other side, and I'm gonna add one half, okay? So it's gonna say the region is gonna be all points where Y is greater than negative one half X plus one half, okay? All right, and there you have it. That's one more review the books. Let's go.